welcome to this tutorial on how I paint the thing. Now I'm starting off with the model already primed in black, Vallejo black, and starting off with a first base coat of Rhinox Hide. So I'm just putting this all over. It's a nice easy one this, so it's a, one of those that's uh, not just a joy to paint, it's a real pleasure to paint because of the ease of the pose more than anything. So you just want to get it all over, not worrying too much about it, just uh, slap it on there. And as you can see I, I attached him, because he's a metal figure, I put him onto this um, holder which is no more than a fabric conditioner top that you use for your washing. But it's ideal for that, so I just cut a slit in it and glued him with super glue on on top of it. It makes for it being much easier. Otherwise he's far too heavy. Blood Tracker Brown from P3 was the next brown I decided to go with. And a heavy dry brushing, well, I'd say an overbrush. It's an overbrush. It's a heavy overbrush of the Blood Tracker Brown. So we get that one on there. <coughs> and um, pretty much cover the whole model in that. Okay, now Agrax Earthshade, good old Agrax Earthshade, so we're slapping that all over to give us those nice lovely dark recesses because from this point on we will be dry brushing a lot lighter so we want that lovely dark Agrax Earthshade in all the recesses there. So once again it's nice and easy to do. Okay, you don't need to be careful with that. Wait for it to dry thoroughly though before you move on to Scrag Brown. This is what I did anyway. Now I'm starting to dry brush this on and um, I'm going a little bit lighter than I did last time. I'm not putting it in all the areas, just some of the areas. So we're just going over. I'd say some of the areas, it's like three quarters of it. Um, concentrating more, starting to concentrate more on where the light would be, where it would seem lighter. Then moving on to Death Claw Brown, and I'm going to do the same sort of thing again, but uh, lighter still now. And uh, again, I'm cutting back on how far I go with it in terms of coverage. So, uh, nice quick on that. And now I'm going for a Towel Light Ochre, which is the the colour like that kind of gives him that kind of orangey feel I think. The towel light ochre seems to be the perfect GW paint for this uh, tutorial. Not that I specifically went with GW, uh, just that that was the one that seemed to be the closest to what I had in mind. So, after this point I, I decided to go for the whites. So I used white scar to do the number four on his buckle and the surrounding trim of the the I don't know what it is belt buckle or whatever it may be. So just filling that in. Enchanted blue then for his uh, his kind of pants that he's wearing there. Pants, trunks, whatever they may be. Enchanted blue is an older. GW paint that I happen to have quite a bit of, so that's good. And it's it is one of my favourite blues actually. The hue of the colour. <clears throat> it's really nice. It's nice and bright too. The coverage is good. The pigmentation um, 
mix seems absolutely fine as well. Uh, it goes on, doesn't dry too quickly um, like some paints do. I decided to put this one on from the pot as it's been thinned down in the past with thinner a fair amount so it, it behaves more like a P3 paint does from the pot now anyway so so that's what I did didn't feel it needed further um, thinning down than it already was it's time to look like the thing now <laughs> coming to life Abaddon Black is next belt and then the number four so it has the, the white surround so that's that's quite eye catching then once you've done that I think it's worth mentioning at this point um, when you get to about the halfway mark, which is um, long gone, you need to protect your model with some uh, some varnish. So I recommend doing that. Jack and Hoff Nightshade was what I used um, once the pants were completed in the blue. It's a lovely, it's a lovely shade of shade. <laughs> it's a lovely, um, I don't know, it's just a lovely colour shade. I, I love it. Calgar Blue is next. And this is what I used to put some um, lighter points on the pants. Not so much highlights. I mean, you could go um, greater detail, but to be honest, I don't think you really need to. Just to give it, I don't know, a little bit of, a little bit more depth to the model. But yes, as I was saying, you need to protect your models, particularly if it's a, if it's a metal miniature. I tend not to, and it's plastic. But on the metal ones, particularly ones of this size, you need to protect your model. You just put your, your um, <clears throat> lighter um, patches on wherever you feel you want to, really. And we're nearly done now with the model. Last stage, Gilliam and Blue uh, from Citadel. Once you put this on, he's then done. So, and that just marries the blues in together. And then you can just pop him on your base and you're good to go. And I'll be doing a showcase video after this as well so thank you very much for watching remember all brushes lead to war i will see you on the next video bye for now